Just look at this little guy. It's tiny. Just a few years ago, things looked very different. I think it was only four years ago, this was just the transmitter and this was the camera. Huge! Obsolete now. I'm going to give you a mini review of this mini camera. This one comes from Ghoul RC. There are many similar ones about. It sports 40 channels. It's selectable 25, 100 or 200 milliwatts and has an output resolution of some 800 TVL in HD and it weighs less than 5 grams. Incredible. Let's take a look at it in detail. I'm indebted to my friend Mario who has a, a YouTube channel in, uh, in Brazil and there'll be a link up into the description where I first saw him use this little camera on uh, an RC car and I was so impressed with it I thought I have to have one. So with the camera transmitter hooked up to just a single lithium cell we can see that it's cycling through first uh, the A refers to the band, one refers to the channel within that band and the three lines indicate that it's on 200 milliwatts. So there's 25 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts. On the top there's a small button. If we press and hold that button for about two seconds we see that the band is selectable and we go through and you have to refer to the leaflet. I want to be on band A anyway. If we then press and hold the button for two seconds and then to release and two seconds again, we can now select the channel number within that band. So now we can cycle through each of the channel numbers. And there are eight channels available per band. Finally, if we press and hold the button for five seconds, we can see the milliwatts. So that's 25 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts. I'm going to leave it at 25 milliwatts just for the moment. The reason I put it down to 25 milliwatts is we don't need to be like Spinal Tap and have everything on 11. It's, uh, it's not always necessary and this thing does get warm. Let's take a closer look at the current consumption. At this moment the voltage is 3.2 which is the minimum and just to double check um, the ammeter against uh, the power supply there. If we now apply the power we can see that it is in fact consuming nearly an amp. Now that's considerably more bearing in mind this is running at the 200 milliwatt level. Uh, it's considerably higher than what it says in the in a little pamphlet which is 740 milliamperes. So that's something to be aware of. Let's step the voltage up. So from 3.2 let's say we go to a fully charged LiPo at 4.2. So at 4.2 it's drawing just over half an amp and say we go to a next popular voltage which would be 5 and at 5 volts we're getting just over 400 milliamps and the highest range is 5.5 volts. 5.5 volts we're down just below 400 milliamps at uh, 398 which is still higher than it says in the pamphlet. It says here 330. So we can see how the current varies with the voltage and make our calculations uh, accordingly. So this little guy is running extremely warm. In fact, it's almost too hot to touch. Um, recently I built this little thermal imaging camera and let's see what we can measure on here auto scale it. We can see the upper range 70 odd degrees there and I'm deliberately keeping the threshold out of the hotspot because it's running at over 80 degrees and 80 degrees is the threshold of this particular uh, sensor so it is running at that, that sort of level. Let's just try and move in there again what that's going to do to the long-term longevity of the camera, I don't know. Uh, obviously, when it's in a, in a model, it'll have some airflow going over it, which will help to, to cool it. We shall have to see. Here is my lash-up for testing the little camera. I've managed to find on uh, Thingiverse a very neat uh, 3D printed mount, 
and I'll be doing a separate video on that because uh, the development of that is quite interesting and uh, literally it is just lashed to the top of my uh, my Hubson. The recording will be made via this Isheen uh, DVR uh, which is on my Isheen goggles. I will actually be using those, I'll be flying with the, the, the Hubson. This is sporting my homebrew 5.8 gigs uh, antenna. I have a, a video about that. So let's go fly. Here we are in this rather remote location and I just thought I'd do a test flight around this uh, this old ruin to compare the uh, the Hubson camera with the little mini camera that we've been investigating. So let's see. So a little bit windy as you can tell. In conclusion, uh, what do we make of this little guy? Well, you can't beat it for its size and uh, being under under five grams. Uh, clearly, it's not a match for the uh, the camera in the in the Hubson as far as the quality is concerned. But if you're constrained by you know the size of the vehicle, or if you're on a on a micro quad or, or something, then um, this is a viable alternative. You could see by the footage that um, you could certainly control quad or even a fixed wing aircraft quite comfortably I didn't notice any 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 latency any any lag uh, between uh, the, the actions of the of the model and uh, and the video footage so for the size weight and the price I don't think you can really beat it